Greetings geometry students. Welcome to your review. I hope that you've been doing well at home. I've been getting feedback. I've gotten at least a little something from everybody. Good job. I'm proud of you. So let's, uh, let's work this thing out with this quiz. You will be receiving a copy of the normal quiz and the way that you're going to submit the answers is that you're going to uh, have a Google Doc that has the question numbers there. So, for example, if question one is multiple choice and the choices are A, B, C, D, E, uh, you would pick the correct answer, which might be like C, and then you just write a C in the little blank. So you'll have the, the quiz in one place. I would suggest um, when you're looking at it on your phone or your computer that you have a piece of paper next to you and then just write the answers as you go and then when you open the Google Doc you're just going to be submitting it. Now I will be reviewing it because just in case you write it as a capital and it's looking for a lowercase, I'm certainly not counting that against you. So um, the grades will be held until I've had an opportunity to review all of the quizzes and see how you did on them. But let's get into the nitty gritty of this review so that you can do a good job in it. Uh, I've got topic lengths, but I'm going to go into more detail as far as what that might mean. Um, you, what, you might be asked to find some missing segment lengths and some drawings and identify tangent lines and common tangents. Remember we had common internal and common external tangents. You might be asked to find the perimeter of a quadrilateral. Remember when you had like a circle and then you had a quadrilateral out the side of it and then you were supposed to find the different pieces and add them all up when they went around. Well, that's definitely on there. You might want to go back and check your notes on that um, because I, we definitely went over that. Uh, you w might need to find the number of degrees in a major arc and how many uh, degrees are in a minor arc. Uh, if you have the minor arc and you need to find the number of degrees in the major arc, and we'll take a look at an example of that. And to know the difference between a major arc and a minor arc, uh, minor arcs are always going to be less than 180, so just a small piece of a circle, and major arcs are always going to be greater than 180, so a bigger piece of the circle. So that would be important for you to know. You would also need to be able to find the measure of an arc if you know the central angle, and that's pretty easy because a central angle is the same as the measure of the arc. That's the definition of the measure of an arc. You need to be able to find out how many degrees are in an arc by looking at how many equal pieces are in a circle. Wait a minute, how many degrees are in an arc by looking at how many equal pieces are in a circle? So for example, if it was divided up into four pieces and you know that a circle is 360 degrees, you could figure out how big each arc is by just dividing it by four. Or if it was divided up by five, because um, you will see when you are looking at your quiz that it's that whole idea of think about if you have a divided up into equal pieces that you're taking 360 for a whole circle. Identifying common external and internal tangents, identifying major arcs, being able to identify radius, diameter, tangent, secant, and accord in a picture, using the arc length formula, and being able to find uh, being able to find the cost of paving a path after finding an arc length. Wait a minute. So if I found out how long an arc length was, in other words, how many feet it was, and I knew that there was $820 per foot on that path, then you would just have to multiply the $820 times how big the piece of that circle would be if there was a circular or a part of a circular path. So that's kind of an application question but I'm giving you a nice heads up on it. So let's take a look at some drawings, okay? And let's kind of get a handle as far as what kind of questions that you could be asked on here, okay? 
So first of all, you need to be able to know what the radii are. Okay, radius. So let's think about that. On this particular picture, AG would be a radius. I'm going to actually copy this and put it into a paint document so I can write on it more easily. Okay, here it comes. Oh, that's not what I wanted. That's from the other class. Let's cut that out and let's do this. Okay, I have to do this right here. Copy and paste. Here it comes. There we go. All right, so we've got this nice picture here that we can take and analyze a little bit and think about the different types of things you could be asked. Uh, we could be asked to, on, on any type of picture, identify the radius. So ra different radii here would be AG would be a radius, AF would be a radius, AB would be a radius. Keep in mind that all of the radii are equal. So you might have a picture like this and know that AG is congruent to AB or that AB, BA is congruent to FA. All of the radii have to be equal and that could be very important to you. You also would need to know something about how this segment comes down and it cuts this line into two equal pieces. We know that because it's perpendicular. So anytime you've got a perpendicular uh, line that's perpendicular to a chord, it cuts it into two equal pieces. So that would tell you that HI equals IF. All right, and so you would have to know those type of things. We would also need to know something like this BF is a diameter. So keep that in mind that, that all the way across that goes through the center is a diameter. You also need to know what chords are. Okay, BD is a chord. BH is a chord. HF is a chord. Technically, even BF is a chord, but it's a special chord called a diameter. This line out here that hits the circle at just one point, the word should be on the tip of your tongue, is a tangent line. Tangent. This line right here that goes through and hits at two pieces, two spots, would be called a secant line. So the difference between a secant and a chord is that a secant S-E-C-A-N-T, secant. Okay, the secant actually goes all the way through. So the secant in this case would be line CD. However, we could also talk about a chord, and the chord is the shorter one that just ends at C and D. There are other chords here also, like B, H, and just as I said, the other ones that pass through that. And then that word that I said before is that tangent. And a tangent here would be J, H, J, G. Now, you can also think about uh, various things with right triangles. Remember, in here, you've got a right triangle. So, for example, if you knew that AI equaled 3, and you knew that HF equals 8, and you needed to find AF, what you could think about in this particular picture is that HF is 8, so that would make this part right here 4, because it's half as big. That would make AI 3, 
And finding HF, then, you might be thinking about it as being a Pythagorean theorem type problem, which it is. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Because here's a little right triangle, you'd have 3 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. Some of you might even recognize it as a special one, but just in case, just in case you've got to simplify a little bit more, we have 25 equals C squared and C equals 5. Another good question for a picture such as this with a problem such as this would be then to ask you to find, I want to see if I can get this, there we go, we'll get rid of this thing right here so we can see. That's an I right there. This one is I. So you could be asked to find IG or GI. And you might be like, wait, I don't have enough information. But you do, because all the radii are the same. If AF is 5, so is AG. So AG is also 5. And if AG is also 5, and this part is 3, some of you would, should have popping in your mind that GI is 2. So keep in mind, there are a lot of different type of questions that can be asked with a very, very similar type of drawing. Now, not all of the questions would be asked uh, with this exact drawing, but there are this, we can get a whole lot of mileage out of a picture such as this. So just uh, so that you're familiar with seeing this and this type of thing. And um, all those different concepts, I just covered a whole bunch of things from our initial, uh, our initial list of topics. So let's take a look at another picture that we could possibly use and have a whole bunch of information asked about something like this. I'm going to put this where I can actually deal with it. There we go. All right, taking a look at this picture, once again, you could be asked to give any type of value in this. You could be asked, if you know that BC is 8, how much is CF? And the answer, of course, would be 8 also, because they're both radiuses, radii. So we have that. You could also have something where if you know that, that for example, GE is 14. So if GE is 14, and you are asked to find how big HA is, Keep in mind that if GE is 14, this one has to chop this into two pieces. But GE is equal to AD. GE is equal to AD. Um, we would have to have just a little bit more information. Like you would have to know that CE CH equals JC, but once we know that CH equals JC, that tells you that these two are equal to each other. And if this one's also 14, then HA would have to equal 7. And I hope that's pretty obvious to you because it cut them into two equal pieces. So we're moving right along with some very good review type ideas in here. Uh, and that idea of having the segments equal to each other is very, very, very helpful. So we know we've got midpoints happening here. And so we're going to assume that that's going to be the case. There is a problem where 
it kind of neglects to mention no it doesn't it's all here never mind um, so once again if you know that this length is GE is 14 you could then uh, extrapolate from that that JG is also 7 and so is JE and get a whole bunch of things out of that if you know for example if you know how big one of these lines is and you know how big for example here to here is you could very easily also find from C to E even if it's not drawn in because you're going to be thinking about uh, a Pythagorean theorem type of a deal okay if you're given for example if you were given the length of a radius if you were given that CB was 9 for example and you were given that this little JE was 2 if this is 9 and this is 2 you would then be able to find out pretty easily that you could subtract that 2 from 9 because they're both radius they'd have to be the same and get a 7 in here see I'm trying to look and see what other types of things that you might encounter in this I'm not necessarily going in order um, let's see okay so if we know that GE equals uh, AD that's going to be a clue that automatically tells us that these lines are also these segments are also equal so if you knew that GE equals AD that would tell us something like if you know that H C is 7 that would tell you also that JC is 7 and let's say for example we know that those two things have a value and we also know that uh, CH oh no not JC this should be J no, that's right let's say we know that GE then um, let's give GE a new value no longer 14 let's give GE a value of 16 okay if GE is a six, is 16 and then you're trying to find a value of CE what you could do <clears throat> excuse me you could divide up your GE into two pieces so you get an 8 here for JE you'd have an 8 here you'd have a 7 here and if you're trying to find CE you can use your Pythagorean theorem a squared plus B squared equals C squared and knowing that JC is 7 and knowing that GE is 16 tells you that JE is 8 and CE although it's not drawn in you can imagine it being drawn in and being um, being part of the right triangle so that would equal C squared so I would have 49 plus 64 equals C squared that would give me C squared equals 49 plus 64 and that's 113 and then in order to get C by itself you would have to take the square root 
on this calculator it's like this but any of even your phone calculator put the 113 in and just push your square root button it'll give you an answer and you can go ahead and use the decimal form of about 10.6 Okay, so CE would be 10.6. And then if further we were to ask you, um, if we were to ask you a, a question then to find FJ, it almost might seem like, wait, how am I going to find FJ? But after you know how big CE is, that tells you how big CF is. And we already know how big JC is, okay? We already know that JC is 7. This is 10.6, which makes this whole thing 10.6. So you could take 10.6 and subtract your 7, and your answer is about 3.6. So make sure you're thinking about all of the things that you know, okay, knowing about these two things being equal, knowing about how these things frequently turn out to be equal, knowing that um, just all those various different aspects of it. Also make sure that you can do a little bit of algebra. Okay, so for example, if you found out that this was equal to this because they told you that HC equals JC, but they told you that GE equals 3X uh, minus 2, and they told you that AD equals to x plus 9 and you're supposed to find first of all find x well we know that these two are equal so you could do 3x minus 2 equals 2x plus 9 do your algebra thing where you take away the 2x from both sides x minus 2 equals 9, add 2, and you get x equals 11. So that would be a, personal, a, a perfectly reasonable question to ask, and you could then possibly be asked from there to possibly find GE. And if you're asked to find GE, you would simply take your number that you got and plug it back in. So 33 minus 2 gives you 31. Okay, so that's a lot of a lot of stuff for you to chew on there, for you to think about. I had men made mention that you have to be able to think about the the tangent lines one of your homework questions dealt with uh, tangent lines and I had already produced a video to answer those questions but if we think about it how many common tangent lines can we make when you've got these apart here you could have remember we've got common external tangents Okay, common external, which means that it has to touch both at just one point. So we'd have one, you'd have two. Not necessarily that you have to draw them. And this one I messed up. But not that you'd necessarily have to draw them, but you would have to uh, know how many you could draw or you could identify them when you're looking at them. There we go. There's one of the tangents, one common external tangent. Uh, we have a second one, one, two, and then one that comes down in between, and another one that comes down in between. Okay. So one, 
two, three, four common tangents. Two of them are common external and two of them are common internal. This one here is just a mistake that because I didn't get, I accidentally tapped first, but you get the idea. Remember the tangents can hit at just one place. So here we have four common tangents, two internal and two external. So you need to be able to see and identify them in whatever form that you would see them. Um, the internal ones are different from the external. I'm just trying to cover my bases here so that we've got pretty much everything covered and reviewed, at least in some way, shape, or form. Because we have been over an awful lot of concepts here, but I think you guys are good and solid on them. Let's see here, what else? All right, let's take a look at this picture and see what kind of questions we can get out of this one. So you can take a look and think through a few things that I've been throwing words out there with. Okay, so for example, in this one, well, we could talk about a whole bunch of things. We could talk about the central angle. Okay, the central angle here for the measure of angle YWZ is going to equal 65 degrees because remember the central angle has to equal the measure of the arc. We could take a look here and we could talk about the minor arc, uh, the minor arc XY minor and the minor arc XY is different than the major arc XY. The measure of that minor arc XY is 40 degrees. The measure of the major arc that goes with it, in other words, the measure of arc XZY, remember this will take you around the long way, xzy, would be 360 minus 40, which would give you 320. So you could talk about the major arc and the minor arc that goes with it. So you have a corresponding major arc that goes with all of the minor arcs. I had mentioned about you having to know what is a major arc and what's a minor arc. Remember, a major arc is to be one that's bigger than 180 degrees, and a minor arc is one that's smaller than 180 degrees. If you have an arc that's exactly 180 degrees, then it's a semicircle. It doesn't have, it's not an arc at all. Arc XZ is a minor arc. And we might have something else that we can look at to go with it. All right, back to what we're talking about here. I need to then move along uh, so that I'm not spending a huge amount of time on this. We can move along to a picture like this. On one like this, it's important to remember that when you've got a tangent, that the two tangent lines are equal. So for example, in any type of problem that you would be doing on this, you could say that JK equals J JK equals MJ. You would also know that there's a right angle in there at M and at K. So once again, that will give you some right triangles. And knowing that you have a right triangle would be uh, possibly able to think Pythagorean theorem, but I don't even think I went that way. Oh, nope, I did. So if you have a right angle in here, because it, all tangents give you right angles, 
you could then find, you could be then asked to find a missing side. So once again, Pythagorean theorem might be your friend. So if you were given, for example, that uh, this one was 10 and this one was 6, you could use Pythagorean theorem. Remember, it's leg squared plus other leg squared. We don't know how big that one is. Equals hypotenuse squared. And then you could solve this. Plus x squared is 100. x squared would equal 64 when you take away 36 from both sides. So x would equal 8. So that would tell you that jm equals 8. You would also be responsible to know, like I said, that jm equals jk. Now, back to this idea that I had made mention of with the dividing up of a circle into equal parts. For example, if you had a circle And let's say you had a square inside of that circle. Let me see if I can get a good square going here. I'll see if it goes. I need to make the square a little bit bigger. So you had the square inside the circle, circumscribed inside. And they asked you something tricky, like how big each one of these arcs are. Because you've got that inscribed and you're really smart, you know that all the way around a circle is 360. So you would be able to find out that each one of them is 90 by just taking the 360 and dividing it by 90. I had also made mention of the idea of, and you had done this before, but if you have a circle and then you've got another figure that goes around it, and that figure see if I can get this to work really nicely and easily. This figure is tangent on all of the sides. Now my last one's going to be kind of a mess here. All right, let's do that. There we go. What you can do then is you can fit, find your perimeter. Remember our perimeter thing? where we were going around the room, like if you knew that this was 8, and this one was 12, and this one was 9, and this one was, looks like it could be 7. You could go through and you could figure out, well, if this one's 7, this has to be 7. If this one's 8, then this one's 8. If this one's 12, this one's 12. If this one's 9, this one's 9. And then add up the numbers all the way around just to review. Get your mind going on that thing again. I'm just trying to get you thinking about these things. And then the last thing that we need to take a look at is... That idea of the arc length, okay, and if you have an arc length, we're going to be using this formula right here. And in arc length, the question could be asked in word form, where it says something like, find the length of an arc that has a certain number of degrees. Or it could ask you to find the length of a radius if you know the arc. And it could also have a picture or not. It could be more of a word type of a problem where you might be asked if you are going to run along a path and you are going to run And you know that you're going to run only like 270 degrees around. Okay, you run 270 degrees around 270 degrees around the path. And 
and the radius of the path is 900 feet because it's a big old circle and you want to find out how far you went you can use this formula L equals 270 over 360 times 2 pi r 2 pi times 900 this is where you would make really good use of a calculator you can do it in steps so even if you just have a calculator on your phone and you never bought the this calculate later like I told you to you will definitely need it in algebra 2 so um, so 0.75 3.14 times 2 is 6.28 times 900 everybody's calculator can do that so your arc length would be 0.75 times 6.28 which is 2 pi times 900 so this person would have run 4,239 4,239 feet along the path and let's say there was another question that says well what if you want to to put in some concrete or you wanted to, to pave that path and you wanted to find out how much that would cost and you knew that it was going to cost you eighty dollars per foot then you would multiply the eighty dollars times that amount if you needed to yeah so if you needed to find that out you would be able to do that and just simply multiply it and get the answer so I think with all that being said I think we have a pretty good review uh, pretty thorough actually compared to some of the other reviews I think you'll be in great shape make sure that you take your time like I said I'm going to get that quiz to you and you're going to make sure that you are uh, writing it down so that you can just put it into the Google form when you're done so I miss you all I can't wait to see you again when this whole thing is over and I wish God's blessings on you.